welcome back to my channel. I do have Teddy in here and I also have our other dog, Lucy. So if you hear a lot of like grunting or licking, it's the dogs, it's not me. I do like having them in here because they're fun. Plus all of you really enjoyed seeing Teddy in my Will I Buy It video. And so he's kind of a cuddler and I love having him here. So anyway, today's video is kind of inspired by a comment that I got in one of my YouTube videos. I can't remember which one of my subscriber friends asked me to do this, or I don't even think she asked, but she was just like, or maybe she did, she said something like, hey, can you do like a project pan video? Because I'm having a hard time finding motivation to project pan, and I was like, well, I don't really do project pans. I do have a drawer here when I do my makeup. So in my everyday little makeup section here, I have a drawer that does have products I'm trying to use up. And um, so I guess I thought I could show you guys kind of what was in that drawer. Now, somebody I follow, I believe her channel, her name is Jackie Lorraine. I will remember to link her channel down below. She set up a really good project pan. I love her channel. She's not a very big YouTube channel. I think she's like three or four K subscribers, but I love her channel because I love YouTube channels that have really good video quality. Hers is exceptional, like it's very crisp. I love her, just her whole vibe because she's very organized. She is completely cruelty free. Just a really, really good channel. So eventually I'm gonna do like a YouTubers under 100k that I like to watch video and Jackie would definitely be included But if you're looking for project pan inspiration and more like how to love your collection videos I would check her out. I also do have a list of youtubers that I love in my description box Plus I usually try to remember to link like what's on my face and stuff like that in my description So if you want to find out any of that Definitely check down below. I'm blabbering now. So I'm gonna stop and uh, get into what is in my project pan for 2018. So guys, like I said, I keep all of the products I'm trying to use up in this acrylic drawer. This fits in that container behind me. I got this drawer set from TJ Maxx and it was a really good buy. So obviously I like having these at like the palm of my hand so I can just grab them. And like I've mentioned in previous videos, I put little stickers on my products that I'm trying to use up so that I can easily identify them in my collection. Now some of these things I've made major progress on and some I haven't, but let me just start off. This I kind of recently added. This is the Hourglass Ambient Palette from 2015. This was one of the first Hourglass products I ever owned and I definitely feel like this palette caters to a more lighter skin tone but I can wear this right now when I'm at my fairest and I decided to pull it out. So I actually use all three of these as my setting powder right now. I just swirl them all together and then the middle shade's like more of a highlighty shade. But when I swirl them together, it's not as shimmery. And I just use that to set my whole face, my under eye. Sometimes I use this as my bronzer and I can get away with it right now. It still shows up on my skin. The hardest time I'm having is probably with the two blush shades just because this is more of like a pinky blush. And then this one's more of a mauve, but it's like a very light mauve. So I feel like it looks more ashy on my face. But since I splurge on this palette, I do want to make some progress and kind of pan it. And if you guys are familiar with Hourglass, the the powder products like a dome form and a lot of these are looking pretty flat so I'm hoping I'll get some kind of pan out of this product in 2018. I don't want to do like this amount of products and put too many restrictions on myself. I'm just going to try because my channel isn't about project panning. I did want to really try and pan an eyeshadow palette but I don't really know if that's realistic for me right now with the goals that I have for my channel because I really like to review and play with eyeshadow palettes and I'm constantly using new eyeshadow palettes so it is hard for me to find the time and so you'll notice a lot of these products are either complexion products or 
setting sprays and things like that, things I can use more often and things I buy a lot less of, but I do buy a lot of eyeshadow palettes so I don't really see myself panning an eyeshadow palette. Um, the next two items I am trying to use up is the Scandinavia Makeup Finishing Spray and the Post Makeup Recovery Spray. I really, really wanted to try this spray because a lot of YouTube beauty gurus swear by the Makeup Finishing Spray from Scandinavia and also I believe they make Urban Decay's finishing spray so I was like, ooh, let me get it and they are constantly constantly running sales on their website so I bought this I think this was like a free gift or something or it was like buy one get one free or something and so I got the post makeup recovery spray because I thought hey that would be cool honestly I really don't like either of these products I don't think the finishing spray does anything wonderful and exciting for my makeup I prefer the MAC Fix Plus, uh, even though it's not a setting spray, I think it sets my makeup really well and I actually feel like it does make my makeup last longer. Now I don't think that's been scientifically proven but in my mind it makes my makeup last longer so I would not recommend the Scandinavia one which is why I'm trying to use it up and honestly I'm feeling this bottle and there doesn't seem like there's a lot more left. There's definitely more left in the post makeup recovery spray. I only really use this at night after I'm done taking my makeup off and washing my face. I'll spray this on after I use my toner, spray this on and then I'll do the rest of my skincare routine. It does say that this is good right after removing makeup but I don't know. I just use it as like the first step in my nighttime skincare routine so it's going a little bit slower than the setting spray but hopefully I'll get those used up here pretty soon. Next, I have two foundations that I want to try and finish up. This is a recent addition. I feel like I'm, I should just use this up because I've had this in my collection for a long time. And especially now that it's winter, it's a great time for me to try and use this up. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Maximum Cover Camouflage Makeup for Face and Body. A lot of people talk about just the regular double wear, but I do feel like this one in particular is like even more heavy duty. It's very, very, very full coverage and I love it. I can really wear it right now in the winter time because even though this is the same shade as the shade I wear in Double Wear, I do feel like this is a little bit lighter and so it's perfect for me right now and you really don't need a whole lot of this foundation. A little bit goes a long, long way and I really, really like it. It's a very heavy foundation though so you want to be careful. If you don't like anything that's super heavy on your skin, you're probably not going to like that foundation. This guy, again, doesn't feel like there's a lot left in it, but this is the Infallible Pro Glow by L'Oreal, and they have a matte version of this as well. I didn't really care for the matte foundation, but this one is so good, you guys. On my normal to dry skin, I think this is fantastic. I really like using it in the winter and in the summertime. It does have radiant finish. And I don't think it looks like super, super matte. And I don't think it looks super, super dewy. It's like a great in-between. And it's drugstore, so I really like this foundation. And I feel like people should talk about it more, but they don't. So just letting you guys know that I personally like it. A Makeup Forever product that I kind of wish I hadn't bought. But I held on to it. It was like a backup that I bought from a VIB sale. And it's too late for me to return it, so I'm thinking I'm just going to try and use this up. But this is the Makeup Forever Step 1 Base Hydrate Hydrating Primer. And they have a few different ones. They have a mattifying one. They have a pore minimizer. They used to have the color correcting ones. I don't know if they still do. I do like that this is in a squeezy tube, so it keeps it like nice and sanitary. You don't have to like dip your hand into anything to pick up the primer. But I think this is definitely something you can use in place of a face moisturizer or on top of a face moisturizer. And especially in the winter time in Fargo, it is very dry. So I will try and get some good use out of this, but. I will not be repurchasing this. I'm not a huge believer in primer. I was talking to my friend Paulina from Paulina Beauty and we were. she was saying to me, she's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I met somebody else who is not a huge believer of primer. And I was like, well, yeah, I don't think it really is something that I need. I think there are some great like pore filling ones that some people with really big pores can use, but I can't use primers like that because I don't need that like extra spackling on my face, but I do like to use a hydrating one every once in a while when I feel like my skin is really dry, but I feel like I, I really don't need it. It was, it was a bad buy on my part. I think I can admit to that. Some other complexion products I'm trying to use up. I do have a few concealers in here. I definitely, definitely want to try and use up this guy. This is a MAC 
Pro Longwear Concealer, I usually store this standing up, so it's actually, I don't have a lot left at all. I think I have about this much left. This color is a little bit dark for me, so I think I'll probably get more use out of this in the summertime. So right now it's just sitting around in my collection, kind of collecting dust. And this one I've been using pretty much every day. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. And I have, I think, about this much left in this particular product as well. So I'm excited to use this up and get it on my collection. It's not really a concealer I'm loving, per se. I know people, like, swear by the Tarte Shape Tape. But on me, it does crease under my eyes. I know it's supposed to be creaseless, but I don't really love it. So I'm going to try and use it up and get it out of my collection. The last concealer is one I really love. And you can tell because there's quite a big dent in this guy. And this is the NARS Medium to Ginger Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I believe these came out in 2016 or 2017. And the internet just like went crazy for this concealer. People were really raving about it and stuff, so I was like, nah, it's probably not worth the hype. It's probably not worth the hype. People are just hyping it up because they got it for free. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. And then it just kept on going. The hype just kept on going, and I was like, fine. Like, I'll just get it. It's not a big deal. If I don't like it, I can take it back. So I bought it, and I really, really like it. I think it's really emollient. If you have really dry under eyes, I think you're going to really like that. Um, because it really like sinks in and it's not too heavy or cakey and it has like a nice balmy feel so it's really really good stuff so I would recommend checking it out if you're in the market for a new concealer and you have my type of skin which is dry normal to dry skin here's another thing I'm trying to use up I probably have to stick a sticker on this but this is MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. I feel like I've been using this forever, so I just want to pan it and get it out of my collection so I can try something else. Like I said, a lot of the products in this video are products I don't, I pretty much use all the time. So I have different eyeshadow palettes that I'm constantly rotating, but my base usually is not very, it doesn't change much. Like I have quite a few foundations and concealers and stuff, but not to the point where I can use like a different concealer every day of the week and not overlap. My eyeshadow collection is definitely out of control, but when it comes to my base products, it's usually very similar products that I use. So with the eyeshadow primer, I don't really have a lot of other options. So I just want to use this one up and then continue on to using up something else that I have. But I do like the MAC Paint Pot and I would highly recommend if you are looking for a good primer. The other item I want to try and use up is MAC Gimme Sun. This is a really beautiful bronzer for me right now and I feel like I'm getting there. Like it's pretty flat and it used to be quite domey and I just love this color for me right now and if you guys are curious I do have my foundation shades listed in the description box as well so if you're wondering if this will suit you that would be a good way to determine it i personally don't think if you are darker than me that this is going to show up on you but i could be wrong i really like a lot of bronzer so that one and then this is also a powder product i'm trying to finish up this is the cover fx perfect press powder in the shade medium i was using their loose setting powder and i was like you know what i want to try a pressed powder so i bought this one and it's okay, it's not like mind-blowing, but I thought, hey, let me try and hit pan on this. So it is in my project pan right now. And then this item, I really just want to try and hit pan on, on one Becca highlighter. And so I chose this one because I felt like this definitely had the biggest divot. And as you can see, I can see pan. I'm almost there. I just need to try and like use this every day. This is honestly a, a beautiful highlighter for... People with my skin tone, because I always hear people say like, oh, I want the perfect pinky highlighter. Well, if you have Becca Rose Gold, you probably really don't need to buy another highlighter. I've heard a lot of people are really excited for, sorry, I'm going to try and put some highlighter on while I'm talking to you guys. I've heard a lot of people are really excited for that new highlighter that Becca came out with. That's more like a golden pink color. But then when I featured that in my Will I Buy It video, I saw a lot of people say, that that one doesn't look like it's going to work with like a darker skin tone because it doesn't have a lot of like pink in it. But honestly, I feel like if you're looking for like a pink one, just go back to old school Becca. Just go back to rose gold because 
It has the most beautiful like pink hue and uh, I already have it in my collection which means it's one less thing I need to buy and you guys probably have it in your collection too because this used to be one popular highlighter from them when they kind of first took off because they didn't have like 80 different limited edition highlighters that they came out with so I really like this. This is definitely old school from Becca Cosmetics but it is really really good so check it out. Okay I'm almost done so another thing this is another bronzer I want to try and use up. As you can see we've hit pan on this and I've panned many of the NARS casino bronzers for the longest time. This is one of the few bronzers that work for me in the summertime. I think it's a little too ashy for me right now because of how light I am but when I tan in the summer, this looks really good with my skin tone, so definitely keep an eye out if you're looking for that in the summertime. I really like the NARS bronzer. I threw this in there as a wild card. This is the Tarte blush in the shade Parte. I actually used to buy these mini blushes a lot, like when I used to like Tarte. I bought like all the sets that came out for holiday. I used to love buying Tarte blushes because they were always such a good deal, but now I feel like I really hit like the top of that pyramid. Like I can't go any higher. I can't buy more blushes at this point. I have every shade that I need. So I thought I should try and pan one of these because I have so many little ones. I have panned one previously. So if I just keep wearing this every day, I could probably do it. It's just a matter of I don't wear it every day because I have so many other blushes to pull from. But it is in my project pan and I'll be very happy with myself if I manage to use one up. Okay guys, the last item that's in like my unofficial project pan is this one shade by ColourPop. I decided not to overextend myself and just put one in there and this is the shade Fringe. And it's basically like a beautiful metallic gold. It's kind of like a sheer color. So I love to tap this on over any other eyeshadow because it instantly just gives it like a shimmer. So I'm going to try and use this up. I've never used up a ColourPop eyeshadow. So that is one of my goals for 2018 as well. Okay, guys. So that is basically my unofficial project pen. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Hopefully, I can make some serious progress and finish up some of these products. Let me know if you guys want to see, like, check-ins. I don't really feel like I've done any, like, significant, you know, damage yet to these products. I definitely feel like I'm going to use this one up completely for sure. And I really want to get through my Give Me Sun, but I can't make any promises on the rest of the products. All I can do is try. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what products you're trying to finish up this year. And also, if you are an expert project panner, I would love some tips and tricks. Other than that, this is everything I wanted to tell you guys in this video. So I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>